everyone watching on Pal Phenom and well we got something different. It's not the go-kart mower. The go-kart mower is gone. Um I'll do a little bit of information about that later, but um, this is the new project of the channel. I kind of left this channel sitting for a while. And a lot has happened since um, I started this whole build type channel thing. So um, I finally got motivated again to start making videos. I don't see why not. I know a lot of people like to see this stuff, so that's exactly what I'm going to start doing. So. I bought this about maybe, eh, we're going to say about four weeks ago, about a month. Uh, this is my Yurf Dog double seater go kart. Not too sure what model or year it would be, or whatever. Pro I'm probably looking at maybe mid to early 2000s, maybe. It's, it's the original paint, original stickers, original seat, all that. Only thing that's not original on it is um, the tires and the motor. So, I bought this actually for 500 bucks only, which was, I feel, a good deal. Um, it has been sitting for quite a bit. I haven't ridden it in uh, in a couple days, uh, more than a couple days probably, probably about a week I haven't ridden it. But what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be pulling that motor out and we're going to be putting in a 420 in this bad boy. So. Um, back to context on the mower, what happened with the mower was, I got that driving, I lost interest in recording it, I got it driving, and I wound up wrecking it, coming on this straight away here, and I bent the frame on it, so I took the whole thing apart, um, stripped the mower down, and I just scrapped the frame and the body and all that stuff. I throw up a picture of it, what it looked like. So yeah, that's what it looked like, it looked uh, pretty pretty cool I think um, but that's gone now but I kept the motor from that mower uh, it was a 420cc as some of you remember and this is a 212 so here she is okay for those that haven't seen the motor yet this is um, my Kohler Commander Pro 14 horsepower 429cc motor um, this is brand new. This is, it's probably only got about maybe three, four hours on it tops. It's essentially brand new. I just did an oil change on it in a brand new spark plug, um, before the wreck. Uh, this motor still does run because, well, um, during the wreck when it, it, it basically kind of, it's, it did a three, the best way I could describe the wreck is, um, I'll go up there and, okay, so essentially... Here's this little straightaway that I have. Um, for those that don't know about mowers, is that tie rods are held on, the tie rod that links both the wheels together is held on my little pin. It's about that big. And um, coming down this, this is gonna be about 35, 40 miles an hour. I hit this big patch or pothole here. And what that did was that knocked the pin right off of the tie rod for one of the wheels. So one wheel essentially went straight and the other one was going that way. And um, that basically screwed up the whole steering. So basically with one wheel straight and the other one that way, uh, you just go straight. So um, essentially it started going straight like this. I bailed off right about here and actually broke my hand, but my hand's okay now. Um, yeah, I bailed off of it right here. I landed, broke my hand. And um, I wound up about, I'd say here, and the mower went straight into the ditch. Um, it knocked down a couple of these little tiny trees here, and it kind of did like a, like a, a, a 360, like not in air, like it kind of spun around like that, and then um, stopped on those two trees there. So now let me go over what I exactly want to do with this in detail. So, first off, this is gone. Like this sketchy throttle setup. It's held on by like zip ties over here. This is all gone. I'm, I'm gonna cut this off, put some flat bar up here and weld it, and then have like a whole switch dashboard type thing going on, kind of like a race car with all the switches and stuff. I'm gonna do all that. Um, I'm gonna put headlights on this. I wanna put, uh, I'm deciding whether I wanna put LED bars 
or the square headlight type things. I'm deciding, I'll, I don't know, I'll have to figure that out at some point, but of course I need to pad this roll cage more because for some unknown reason, the guy who I bought it off of, he only put padding on this part of the roll cage. And this is like the least spot that you hit your head on. You always hit your head on this, especially when you're off-roading it. Uh, you kind of bounce up and you, your helmet hits this. And um, your legs sometimes do hit that. I had my leg hit this and that didn't feel too good. And my knee hit this and that really hurt. So um, those are going to go. I'm getting all four new tires for this. The fronts are, yeah, they're like NASCAR slicks. They're essentially bald, you can see. Yeah, look at that. That's There's no tread. Uh, this one is probably the only good tire. And then this one goes flat every six seconds because it's probably dry rot or something. The guy said that it was sitting for like um, four or five years in his backyard. But now I want to show you some of the stuff I have gotten and some of the stuff that will help me through this build. So one of the most important things and probably one of my greatest investments I've ever made with my money is I bought a welder. Finally, I needed one of these. Um, it's a Harbor Freight Chicago MIG 170 welder. So it's not, it's not, it, it's flux core and MIG. It, it's like a hybrid between both. So you can see you can hook up a gas bottle to it there. Something else I bought was an impact gun, also from Harbor Freight. This thing takes off anything. I need some charging, but it cuts, it, it takes off, not cut, it takes off anything. And I mean anything. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm missing something that I bought. Um, I bought a lot of stuff over the past couple months uh, since the mower video or whatever, but enough talking we're gonna start pulling this motor out we're gonna undo the throttle cable all that i'm gonna take all that off um i'm gonna take off the chain it takes like six seconds to undo these motors because there's like four bolts underneath it so um i'm gonna take off the throttle cable take the chain off and then see where we go from there okay chains out throttle cables out now all we have to do is pull the motor out uh, it's it's really easy to take everything apart on this. Um, yeah, I'm, that the master link broke on the chain too when I when I took it off because like the guy I bought it from said it was sitting for like five years. So this go kart actually tops out at thirty five miles an hour exactly. Um, I took it out one day and I installed a, the GPS speedometer app on my phone and um, I took it out on like the street at night and I just got floored the thing the governor is off of it there's no governor on this motor um so yeah, i just floored it sent it um it did about 35 with this gearing on there it, it could definitely be faster if i put a smaller sprocket on there um yeah it, this thing gets up and goes i i'll i'll throw in some videos of, since i'm not going to be driving it because it's wet out this tire's done for um and one day I was riding and I nearly almost wrecked it because of these bald tires. The thing just oversteered and it just, I nearly, I nearly flew into a ditch with it. So I'm done riding it for now until the new motor's in and the new tires are on there. And the brakes are completely screwed on this too. Let me show you. The brakes do absolutely nothing. And this, the drum itself is missing the little set screws that keep it in place. I'm not going to be using brake drums because once that 420 is in there, this thing's going to be going way over 35 miles an hour. So <laughs> um, I'm definitely putting a smaller sprocket on, new brakes. I'm going to probably use the same brakes that I had on the mower. Well, not those exact ones, um, but the same style, the mechanical brake with the disc and all that. And this already has a this already has a link to it, so I don't have to worry about having to fabricate any brake links in anything like that, like how I did with the racing mower. I'm gonna pull this into the garage because it's getting it's getting dark out and it's wet. I don't like wet and working on the ground. It's all wet and stuff. And, uh, so I'm gonna pull it into my garage, um, jack it back up and start pulling this motor out. Oh yeah, something else. Um, I need to completely redo the front alignment on this. Um, the steering wheel is straight, 
right now. You it's you might not be able to notice it, but that wheel's towed out more than that one is. And um, the tie rod here is just it's done for because I was out riding with my friend one night and um, I hit like this big rock and it just completely bent this tie rod. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to take that off and uh, see if I can maybe order a new one. I'm not too sure if your dog will sell any parts for this anymore. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they won't, but if I can't, I'll just order a new tie rod in general because I know uh, Amazon and stuff and BMI carts, they sell the adjustable ones. So they come in like a certain length and you can like screw them out and screw them in and you can adjust them to length. So other than that, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. All right, in the garage. A nice new addition to the garage is these lights. These things light up everything. You can see everything. So for those that have never pulled one of these out, basically there's four bolts. I'm just using these two as an example. It's like this in the front as well, and you can't probably see that, but there's just, there's four bolts that hold these motors on. You just undo these with like a hand ratchet or an impact gun. I'm just gonna use an impact gun because it's quick. Um, you undo those and then you just lift this out. Okay, so this had to have been probably the weirdest go-kart engine I ever had to take out before. Because um, the guy, did, originally these go-karts have like six horsepower Tecumseh's, but this guy put a Predator in it. Um, there's two bolts here. Those are the, two, the rear ones are off. I just didn't pull them out yet. Um, each bolt was a different size. Like, <laughs> some of them were 13 millimeter, like, one of them was a 13, one of them was a 16, one of them was like a 10. It was, it's stupid. Like each, each mount was a different size, which was so weird. I've never seen that or had that happen before. So I had to constantly keep going back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out which size it was. And um, yeah, I, I, they're all out now. So now I can lift this out and it should just come right out. All right, moment of truth. Let's pull this out. Or let's see if it'll come out. It's like that. That was, that is, this is so much lighter than my 420 is. This, I expected this to be eh, somewhat heavy. They're not heavy in general, but I expected this to weigh similar to that. This is so much heavier and this is dry. Like this doesn't even have the gas tank on or anything. This has a torque converter and a full tank of gas. I had to drain the gas out of it, but this has a full tank of gas. That doesn't even have the gas tank on it, and it's it's so much heavier than this. But something I never seen before was these. I've never seen these used before, so I guess these are kind of like spacers or like I guess old adapters. I'm not too sure what these are actually are. I've never seen them before, but I'm quite sure I'm gonna have to use it. Uh, I'm gonna have to keep these and use them on the 420 because the 420. The hole sizes are much bigger than these. Um, so I'm actually a little bit concerned too whether or not the um, whether or not this plate will even adapt to that motor over there. So I might have to drill like some holes or bore these out a bit just to adapt that motor onto this. But so what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna remove those blocks. I'm just gonna pick this motor up and I'm gonna rest it in here and just see if it will even clear this bar and uh, even remotely close line up to the sprocket. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to get a new sprocket anyway because I don't think this is, I don't think this will support a number 40 chain or not. So I'll have to check. Um, I actually have some number 40, no, you know what? I actually have some number 40 chain laying around. So I'm gonna see if that'll fit onto that. All right, um, yeah, this is some chain I had sitting around from the racing mower. See yeah, how well this fits around this. Oh, that's nice. That's great. So I don't have to get a new sprocket. That's actually maybe I do. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a good amount of play on that. You guys, tell me what you think in the comments about uh, the chain kind of being able to move side to side like that. I'm not too sure. Um, but something I do have is I have the rear end from the racing mower down in my basement because I told you I pulled, I took the whole thing apart. I have the rear end, and uh, I do have a 62 sprocket that that this originally ran off of um this is a one inch axle i'm pretty sure i'm not too sure this is kind of like a 
I don't know, this is kind of like an open diff type thing. I'm not too sure. So it's like one wheel drive, but at the same time it's not. So I don't know, it's pretty weird. I never really messed around with anything like that before. Something else, um, this torque converter, I don't think I can reuse this. Cause since this is for a Predator 212, this is a six horsepower, that's a 14 horsepower. The power difference is massive. So uh, this is a three fourths shaft and that uses a one inch shaft. So um, I'm not too sure. Something I'm gonna see is if maybe this plate will even fit on this. I doubt anything off this motor will fit on my 420 because the size difference, it's just, it's so much bigger than, than if I take off the gas tank, this and that, you, you can truly see how much bigger that 420 is than this motor is. Okay, so I just kind of rested the 420 in here. Oh my God. There's a lot of things that's going to have to be moved. Um, I tried lining it up as best as possible with this engine plate. Nothing's lining up at all. So I'm going to have to completely redrill stuff. Uh, the sprocket's going to have to be moved over because it's literally it's resting on the crankcase right now. And I want to see if I can move this motor forward because uh, the valve cover is resting right on this roll bar. So in the incident of any kind of rear end collision at all, whether it be with a tree or another go-kart or ATV, it's just going to knock this valve cover out and potentially crack the head. And that would just suck. And I don't think they, I don't think the aftermarket scene for this motor is very big because it is a Kohler. So, okay, we're back the next day with the go-kart or the Yerf Dog. Uh, the Yerf Dog go-kart, yeah, that's the name. Um, in this video, I at least want to accomplish getting this motor in and bolted up to the uh, engine plate. So, a few things I'm going to have to do is, um, I'm going to clean off this plate, because this plate is nasty. Uh, I don't want the motor sitting on all that garbage. It was just years of buildup and dirt and stuff. So I'm going to wipe all that off. This is held on by a set screw there. Um, I'm gonna see if I can loosen that and hopefully not strip it because uh, those um, Allen key sockets or whatever, they're like notorious for stripping if you use like the wrong size or uh, if they're old. So I'm gonna be really careful with that not to round it out or anything. Just so I can slide the sprocket over so it'll at least kind of clear the uh, engine because I just saw in the last clip the engine plate was resting on the sprocket so when it comes time to roll this out I don't want the sprocket just rubbing against the um, engine plate so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen that up push it over and then I'm going to clean off that engine plate to get ready to mount the engine in okay so the motor's in uh, it's the bolts are finger tight right now so it's it's easily movable because I did that because I'm going to have to take this motor back out in the next video when it comes time to pull this rear end out. Uh, I have to order some sockets that'll fit those nuts. Those are one inch nuts, I think. And so I got to find something that'll fit that because I don't have anything that'll take them off. Um, but yeah, I just, I didn't go with uh, drilling out the holes in this plate either. I just cleaned it off and used the bolts off that 212 over there to bolt this engine up because why not? Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to pull this motor back out next video and just take the rear end out. But like I said, my only concern with this whole setup is, uh, the valve cover being right here next to the, um, chassis bar or roll bar. Well, no, this would be a roll bar, but next to the frame. Um, like I said, if something does hit this, it's going to probably dent the valve cover and then potentially crack the head or damage the head. And if that happens... I'm screwed and um, something else I need to find out is what torque converter will fit on this because right now that's just a centrifugal clutch um, the aftermarket scene for this motor is is essentially nothing there's it's nowhere near as popular as a 212 or a Honda or a Briggs or anything it's a Kohler it's like it, this motor is originally really designed for um, it's a, it's designed for like generators um, power washers all that stuff so there, there's not even like a throttle hookup system on here. Like I was looking online when I first bought this motor to how to hook up a throttle cable and I couldn't find out at all how to hook up a throttle cable. Like there's holes over there, but there's nothing. That's nothing. I, I just couldn't find anything 
that could like link a throttle key will do it. That's why I just uh, directly tape it onto this with a urban and it's always worked. That's what I do with the racing mower. But um, I'm going to have to take this centrifugal clutch off. This is probably going to be a nightmare to take off because it was a pain to put on. Now, I'm hoping that I won't have to spend like 250 bucks on like a torque converter for this motor. I'm just looking for like a basic um, torque converter that will get this going so I can off-road because this clutch uh, with the go-kart mower, it had a lot of trouble getting this thing going. And this weighs like 10 times more than the go-kart mower does. So I'm definitely for sure going to have to get a torque converter for it if I want this to drive properly. And um, yeah, that's really it.